got some great news alongside Janai. And we could talk about all of these together now. So yes, Janai is very important, but just as important are Jalen and Dylan in this mixture. The season may be over, but our minds have shifted in the offseason to roster moves for Auburn men's basketball, who was leaving, who was staying, who was coming in. And most recently, Auburn basketball fans got a lot of news centralized around, shall I say, the centerpiece for what could be the team this year. We're obviously talking about the news that Janai Broom and several other big men for the Auburn Tigers making their decision to stay. And that's what we're getting into here on E2C Network, where we share the Auburn experience, whether it be about sports, culture, or just the Auburn family in general. We talk about it here. If it's orange and blue, it's what we do. Back with me is a familiar face for a lot of you. You'll know him from the Jungle Podcast, Mr. Matt Donaldson, here to discuss one of his favorite topics, Auburn basketball, and some roster discussion with me. Matt, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Kyle. It's great to great to be talking Auburn hoops throughout the year. You know, that's one of the fun things um, that Bruce and the staff have really gotten into the culture. And uh, yes. I, everybody was so engaged with not only who was potentially leaving, but who was coming back, and then who are we filling these spots with? And there, there were, I feel like there was more interest and intrigue and drama around that this year than I can remember. Yeah, it's interesting because most off seasons before Bruce were there was nothing to talk about really. Sure. Maybe maybe we got excited about one person coming or something like that. And as Bruce has gotten here, you know, there were more exciting things like bigger matchups and things like that that were being scheduled and we'll talk about those sometime later. But the biggest thing now is who are we going to bring in? Who can we convince to stay, especially in this world of NIL transfer portal? Just as exciting to bring in, it's hard to keep people from staying or to stay here at Auburn. But even going to the NBA draft, and that's really where our focus shifts today on this episode, is discussing probably, let's just not act like anybody's more important than anybody else, but everybody's mind was centralized around after the guard situation was figured out with departures and additions, Janai Broom, the big man position. So let's start right there, and we'll discuss some other important players too, additionally. But Janai Broom was the biggest piece that a lot of people were worried about mainly because he had an opportunity to go into the NBA draft. So what I'd like to talk with you about first is about that draft option that he had and what he was maybe able to accomplish for himself. Maybe it got a little bit scary for Auburn fans too. So your impressions and thoughts of Janai entering the draft process and how you kind of watched it and looked at it as that unfolded this offseason. Well, it's no surprise he went in. Um, Bruce is very consistent. He wants his guys to test the waters when they can. Uh, I think it's a beneficial thing for them to make informed decisions on you, the way the rules are now. You can do that and keep your college eligibility, which I think is great for the athletes and their well-being. So no surprise that he and Dylan Cardwell and Jalen Williams and Alan Flanagan, all those guys went in and did that. Yep. Um, I personally, I, you talk about freezing cold takes. Um one of our last episodes of our podcast, we talked about, there's only really two guys I'm pretty confident, like 95% sure are going to be on this team next year. I said it was Trey Donaldson, and I said it was Janai Broom. And then as the process played out, Janai just did really well. He did. Um, I thought his size, he's not the tallest guy. He's not necessarily an above the rim kind of player. I just didn't know how well his game would translate to the NBA, but he got an invite not to the uh, combine initially, but to kind of a, you know, kind of a, a chance to earn a spot at the combine, which he eventually did. He shined in that. He, he grabbed a lot of people's attention. He was hitting that outside that three pointer that we saw come on at the end of the mm -hmm. season, which is obviously huge in the NBA. A big guy being able to stretch the floor, and uh, every day it just felt like he was making waves, and which was great for him. But all of a sudden, this. This guy that seems so solid, he had a great first year in the SEC. I was super excited to, you know, watch him build on that. It just got dicey, and it it ultimately became a 50-50 thing. And um, fortunately, you know, I think the, the coaches were desperate to keep him. I think they had really good conversations with him. He definitely had an opportunity to be at least on a two-way contract in the NBA, yep. which is what Jared Harper has been on at times, where you're kind of in the G League potentially and also allowed to play a certain number of games up. Maybe he would have been a second round pick. It's hard to say. Um, but now he has a chance to come back, build on that draft status and, and try to maximize what he could make 
next year or in the future. So pretty wild sequence, honestly. Great for him. And nationally, people are looking at Janai Broom now. It's like, oh, Auburn's getting that guy back who really could have left. Yeah, it's really interesting to watch his story, how it's been unfolding, but now how it's going to unfold. Because a lot of the times Auburn fans have had this conversation, somebody left too early. And you could probably make a few cases there that they left a little bit too early, just you know, seeing how things have played out for both Auburn and for that individual. But this one, it really seems like he kind of got the best of both worlds. He got to push it to the limit. Not everybody was like, okay, you're going in the draft. Sure. We're going to get you know, looked at all that normal process. But then, as you said, it got scary, but it's, it's hard for us as Auburn fans. Cause we want our guys to succeed. Bruce wants these guys to succeed, but he also knows the challenge. What happens if they don't return? And so I think that's what got scary for Auburn fans. So before we talk about the implications of what it means for the team with him deciding to stay, what do you think would have happened to this team? Let's just assume everybody else came back. If Janai Broom doesn't come back to the team. Well, it's a huge gaping hole and it would have been so late to try to fill, right? I mean, you've already got your incoming class kind of set. Obviously there's the transfer portal, but as we can talk about in a later, you know, um, conversation, it, it, it's difficult once some of those elite guys pick their destination and you're kind of, I know there's lots of allegations of tampering, and go, but there's no guarantee, first of all, that certain players are going in the portal. So you kind of have to play that game. I honestly feel terrible for coaches, college basketball coaches yeah. these days, because it's so hard. And I think the coaches genuinely just assumed that he would be back. I'm sure they had conversations. It seemed like the way they approached the portal, that that was not a huge concern. And then you saw they started reaching out to more big guys as yeah. that process went went on, and they were trying to cover their bases. But obviously, I think they were they they really saw, you know, for me stepping back, he didn't quite have the Walker Kessler ascent, which I don't think we'll ever see again in SEC play. Walker just became a an alien and was incredible. <laughs> but um, Janai Broom kind of quietly just got, he played really well. He was, I think people kind of took him for granted a little bit, but by the end of the year, he was kind of like the most solid offensive weapon we had in the yes. post, which is such a weird thing for a Bruce Pearl offense. And he really was developing his outside shot. He was getting, gaining confidence. And I think by the end of the year, he had a ter you know rough night at the free throw line in the last mm -hmm. uh, tournament game. Uh, but I just... I think losing him this year would have been a, 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 the way it would have happened where it was a last minute kind of you thought he was coming back and then he doesn't. Now you've got to figure something out. It would have been really brutal for next year's uh, the ceiling of next year's team. Yeah, it would have at least speculation wise made things a little bit dicey. Everybody would have been we're too small again. Now we've seen some pretty small Bruce Pearl teams do yeah. really well. So I continue to say people that make those definitive statements, not just, you know, talking about it in general, but making, oh, we're going to be terrible. Uh, you haven't watched Bruce Pearl at Auburn for quite some time. He's found a way to make work with what he has. I mean, if you can make Simeon Bowers be a point guard and make it not look horrible, my gosh, you can do anything. No offense, Simeon. <laughs> You're not a point guard, at least at the college level. The other thing, though, is you got some great news alongside Janai, and we could talk about all of these together now. So not only does Janai not uh, break our hearts, he decides to come back. And I think we all could feel that with some of his social media, you know, uh, hints and things like that. Some people were still nervous, but I kind of felt like he was setting that up. Right after that, we get Jalen Williams deciding to come back. Your power forward, in a sense. Right after that, you get Dylan Cardwell, uh, another traditional center for Auburn to come back. So you go from having this team full of a bunch of old guards and new guards to getting your entire, you know, big man uh, team back. And that's an amazing thing because yes, Janai is very important, but just as important are Jalen and Dylan in this mixture. So your thoughts now about having all three of these guys back, what it means for Auburn and how pumped are you? <laughs> I'm really pumped. Um, if, if you've listened to our podcast, Jalen Williams is my guy. I'm, I'm a big, big fan. Now, hold um, on now. You can't take him from me. I've told you this before. Jalen Williams is my guy first. Well, you're, and, and, there's, and there's some people on Twitter that would also <laughs> claim that they were first. All that. I love the way Jalen plays. I, I thought there was the real bright spots last year. We definitely had some weaknesses offensively at some of the guard positions. We kind of identity-wise struggled at times, but the best things that Auburn did last year on offense were 
um, run through Jalen and Janai Broom inside, which was, again, a, a very different kind of approach. Like you said, Bruce really adapted and I think did a lot of different things. I love having both those guys back and Dylan as well. I mean, um, you know, it's great to have Janai back, but if he goes down and gets hurt for a month, I, I'm personally am very confident that Cardwell is experienced enough and, and has enough ability to step in and honestly stuff the stat sheet with rebounds, blocks, be that prototypical center that we've seen. I, I kind of hate it for him in the sense that this is the third straight year that his minutes are probably going to be relegated to that true backup role. But you always have to be ready. And Cardwell's just been an, you know, an incredible asset for Auburn. And you know he gets, I think, the whole value of being – a student athlete at a school like Auburn, he's obviously embraced that and his his popularity and his um, oh yeah all the things that come with that. He he's really carved out a niche for himself. So it's great to have those three guys back in, in college basketball. What's winning right now is being old, having a bunch of returning veteran guys, and Auburn on the front line. Like you said, this is about as old as you get. Jalen Williams is a fifth year player. I believe Cardwell. This will be his fourth year, right? That sounds about right. Yeah. And Janai Brooms, the young one. Who I guess this is his third. This is his third year in college overall, I guess. Yeah, second in Auburn, yeah. So, but man, Jai Broom is an, a grown man, an adult, as Scott Van Pelt might say. <laughs> I, I love that we can build around that with a lot of the new moving pieces in the backcourt. Yeah, I am super excited about this group. And, you know, you say about Dylan that, yes, maybe he does have to, quote, unquote, play behind someone again. But let's remember that this is a team that is – technically still lacking something with Yoan Treor not being in the mix. Now, was he in the rotation a lot at the end of this thing? No, but he was still a big body that could fill something if somebody got hurt or something like that. So these guys, even with uh, the three of them back together, we got to have them stay healthy. They got to, uh, you know, find a way to work together on those minutes. And, and look, Jalen plays a little bit different than Janai do and, and Dylan with those type of roles. But the the big men, the, the guys that we're going to really lean into, this is a special, special group. And with a lot of people saying really what we needed to fix, maybe fix maybe is not the right word, improve upon was guard play. You also added some bigger guards. So even if you are maybe lacking that extra big man body in a Yuan Treor, you kind of maybe... Is it fair to say that you've added a little bit of that with the type of guards we brought in? Absolutely. I mean, you're going from, I love Zeb Jasper, um, but Zeb Jasper is very short. And uh, you're going from him to a, probably a guy like Denver Jones, 6'4". Um, you got Chad Baker Mazzara, who's what, 6'7", I think listed at 6'7". So he's, you know, in line with that Alan Flanagan, maybe a little taller, maybe not quite as built. Um, yep. And then... There's some different measurements out there on Aiden Holloway, um, <laughs> but either way, Aiden Holloway and Trey Donaldson are going to be taller than, than Wendell Green was. Um, yes. So you are getting a little more height at the backcourt. And, and Jani Broom showed he is just fine inside. He, he's not a seven-footer, but he he held his own against everybody. shebway has gone from Kentucky now. Oh, Broom goodness. is kind of like going to be one of those older adults inside in the SEC, and, and Jalen – I want to see Jalen be a little more aggressive on the boards, but he's, to me, I don't have any concerns about him at power forward. And and he can honestly slide down too if he needs to and play center. We've done that a little bit. Yep. And I wonder if they're going to maybe cross-train Janai just a little bit in case of emergency at power forward. Because like you said, you, you may be in a scenario where you want to get some combination of Janai Dylan and Jalen on the floor. So I, I'm sure the coaching staff will kind of work yeah, through that. that they begin preseason practice that you probably won't see them all on the floor together, but no. that's a, that's a fun little trio uh, just to kind of think about how you can utilize them. All unique talents, varying degrees of types of talent, but a crucial integral part of this team that has come back. And while not to sit here and stoke the flames to start making Auburn fans think that they're going to make some incredible run this year, you can see based off this group alone, what is potentially a really good foundation with some seasoned veteran guys, especially big man guys that you can lean on down the stretch, especially in SEC play. So as we conclude our conversation, uh, I do want to just encourage you all to continue to follow this basketball team and throughout the off season, we'll be talking about them whenever we can. And Matt, we appreciate you being here to talk with us a little about uh, some basketball news, some roster discussions and happy discussions about that. Have these guys back on your way out. Where can the fine people find you? 
Yeah, so you can find me, Jackson, and a couple other guys who do our podcast just at the, the Jungle, Auburn Men's Basketball Podcast. Um, it's a fan podcast, a lot of fun. Um, like you, we, we kind of do some after the game reaction stuff. That's kind of how we started, and we've been able to have some cool interviews. And so go check us out. Um, cooler people than me uh, run our Twitter, Instagram. You can find us at Auburn Jungle on Twitter, and I believe the Jungle Auburn Podcast on Instagram. And you can find me on Twitter at Kyle Loomis 24 if you want to follow me personally. And of course, follow E2C Network everywhere you can get it across every social media platform. And of course, here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to E2Z Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. War Eagle.